Introducing a completely redesigned experience that you can sense. And that senses you. The new Dell Latitude laptops bring your work closer to you. This is Nine News with Tracy Vo. Good evening. Accused Victorian high country killer Greg Lynn has sensationally given evidence from the witness box at his double murder trial. The former Jetstar pilot told the families of the couple he's accused of killing that he's sorry for their suffering. Amber Johnston has been covering the case. Well, interest in this case has just boomed overnight with people queuing up outside the courtroom from early this morning to catch a glimpse of the high country killer as he stands up to give evidence in his own murder trial. Among those were friends and family of the missing campers as well as Greg Lynn's wife, all of them squeezing into a packed public gallery to watch the accused killer give evidence. You understand that not coming forward causing immeasurable pain to their family and loved ones, that people People will regard your acts as despicable. It was despicable. All I can say to the families is that I'm very sorry for their suffering. The former Jetstar pilot admits he went to extreme steps to cover up the deaths of Russell Hill and Carol Clay, such as burning their campsite and dumping their bodies in remote bushland before painting his car and removing its awning in a desperate attempt to cover up his tracks. Do you deserve to be punished for that conduct? Yes, I I deserve to be punished. In this trial, have you offered to plead guilty to the destruction of evidence? Yes, I have. But he claims he had no reason to murder either of them, telling the court it was all a tragic accident sparked by an argument over Mr Hill's drone. As a result of that dispute, you murdered Mr Hill. That's not true. You took aim at Miss Clay and you shot at her multiple times. That's not true. Now, his fate is in the hands of 14 jurors who could reach a verdict as early as next week. Commemorations are right now underway in France, marking the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Live to Europe correspondent Jessica Millward in Normandy. Jess, key figures are attending these solemn services. Evening, Tracy. Yeah, there's been some really moving scenes here in Normandy and right across France to mark the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. Of course, that is when 160,000 troops landed on the shores of France and in the end liberated Europe. We've seen a very long list of world leaders here to mark this anniversary. President Joe Biden among them, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and then the royal family as well the King, Queen and the Prince of Wales all attending various services. We've even had Hollywood royalty here too. Tom Hanks went along to one this morning. But the VIPs of today are most certainly the veterans. Those veterans that have come across here to France now in their late 90s or early 100s, they are being celebrated today for the role that they played and certainly their bravery in that unprecedented amphibious military mission. We hadn't seen anything like it before. But now as we go into the afternoon, things are turning from solemn to celebration. We are in one French village this afternoon where a parade will be held here in a couple of hours, a chance to celebrate those veterans once again and to say thank you and merci. It's a carnival-like atmosphere here. You can see the flags of the Allied nations that took part in the D-Day landings here at Normandy. People are having drinks, there's flags waving, uh, there's lots of food stalls around, so certainly the mood has shifted from one that was very solemn this morning at sunrise we saw an amphibious vehicle come onto the shores here at Gold Beach where we are this afternoon and a military uh, personnel played a lament so that was very moving indeed and then we've seen a number of wreaths laid at those services up and down the coastline but certainly this afternoon it will turn into more of a celebration there are uh, fears that this will be the last major D-Day anniversary attended by living veterans given their age but it most certainly it won't be the last that will be celebrated and we will, of course, remember them in years to come. An emotional day for all. Jess, thank you. Trade unions are pushing for an extra week of annual leave. There are also calls for Australia's younger workers to get paid more, but employer groups say it will cost jobs. 
Before dawn in Adelaide, the Prime Minister paying for coffee. Gotta get the right one. Pretty good here. He was served by 24-year-old Katie. Tonight, though, unions want any younger colleagues to be the ones paid more. Those young workers, they pay full rate on groceries. Full rate on rents. Junior rates apply to 75 awards in low paid industries such as hospitality, retail and fast food, usually for those under 20. As an 18 year old I'm earning $10 less than a 21 year old roughly. This is quite a natural thing that junior workers would be paid less than seasoned workers. And that's reflected in the current settings. Tonight the change is just a proposal and would need to be negotiated into awards or approved by the Fair Work Commission. I support the Fair Work Commission and Fair Work Commission having proper processes. And in the City of Churches, a union prayer for another week of leave for Australian workers. We would again urge that common sense be applied here. These proposals come at a time of weakness in the economy and productivity, but they also come at a time of increased union influence here in the corridors of power. The Prime Minister and Workplace Minister Tony Burke honoured and on hand as unions gathered last night. Our trade union movement will not forget, will not forget what this Labor government has done. Charles Crouch, Nine News. A cash bonus for struggling South Australians as well as vouchers are available in the latest state budget while the government is also preparing for a major jobs boost. Dylan Smith has more from Adelaide. Dylan, break it down for us. Good evening, Tracy. Cost of living relief is certainly at the heart of Stephen Mulligan's third budget as Treasurer. Everyone on the cost of living concession, that's some 210,000 South Australians, will receive a one-off payment of $244 into their bank account in the next few weeks, while of those people, renters or self-funded retirees will also get a boost, with their existing concessions to double to $256. Now, a whopping $692 million will be invested to train up South Australians to make workforce challenges like AUKUS. It includes funding 160,000 new training places. Now, there's also relief for families with children. They'll be eligible for two $100 sports vouchers per child. And again, there's a record health spend of $2.5 billion to help fix the ailing health system, taking the government's health expenditure to more than $7 billion over the past three budgets. Now to where the money is coming from. The government is making more on taxes like stamp duty, which poured an extra $292 million into the budget over the last year. We've been fortunate for increased revenues, but I think we are making some decisions which governments don't usually make uh, to better set our state up for the future. And Tracy, while there has been extra revenue, the state's debt is set to increase by 50% to $44 billion by 2027. Dylan, thanks for the update. Clive Palmer's superyacht The Australia has been rescued tonight after running aground on a sandbank near the Gold Coast Wave Break Island at Broadwater. It took several attempts for the $40 million vessel to be pulled free by a tugboat shortly before 8pm. It's the second time the 56-metre vessel has become stuck in eight months reportedly running aground in Singapore in October. It's not known whether Clive Palmer himself was on board. Sydney is tonight on flood watch with as much as 250 millimetres of rain on the way. It's already hit the south coast, streets vanishing under the deluge. A Thursday afternoon downpour across our south coast and what used to be the front yard of a family's Shoalhaven home. No. Entire streets submerged in ankle-deep water. We have no control. It's just a matter of watching and acting and um, doing the best we can. Roads turning waterways at Kangaroo Valley. Some drivers riding it out. But not everyone making it through. This pea plater in Huskisson rescued from flood water. Over the last 24 hours, parts of the south coast have seen a month's worth of rain. Shoalhaven and Illawarra worst hit. The southern Illawarra coast, where it has been raining most, if not all, of that past 12 hours, and not just raining, but raining heavily. A taste of what's ahead. Next stop, Sydney. Ruth Wynne williams Nine News. Officials are watching this part of Sydney, our city's west, very closely tonight. A moderate flood warning is in place right here on the Hawkesbury River at Windsor. That extends all the way into North Richmond tonight. And on the Nepean River at Penrith and again at Menangle, moderate flood warnings in place there too. The advice for people in these areas tonight is to stay across all the alerts as they come in, to stay vigilant. This rain, this downpour, it's expected to impact our city's waterways into the weekend. 
At least 45 people are dead after an Israeli airstrike on a United Nations-run school in central Gaza, according to local officials. Israel's military confirmed the strike, saying they were targeting a Hamas compound inside. A suspected Russian-Ukrainian terrorist has been arrested in Paris just weeks before the Olympics. The 26-year-old suffered serious burns after an explosion in his airport hotel room. Investigators found guns, false passports and materials for bomb-making. There are fresh questions tonight over the discovery of a woman's skeletal remains in Brisbane and a Rawlings reports. Constance Wacho's family maintains she was murdered, but today a coroner could not agree. It was a grim discovery, the remains of a woman found in a duffel bag in long grass at Kangaroo Point Cliffs in 2018. Identified as mother of 10, Constance Wacho, who'd last been seen alive in 2017. An inquest in 2022 hearing, she had been couch surfing. The last person to see her alive was her then partner. The inquest heard from multiple witnesses with the deputy coroner today finding that although Constance's death was suspicious, she couldn't pinpoint who killed her or how she died. We need justice for Constance May Watcho. That's what we need. We want an invitation from the new Queensland Police Commissioner to come and meet with us because we need to know what's going on. Queensland Police say that a senior officer will be in contact with the family. Detectives will review the coroner's findings. And the police investigation remains open. Anyone with information is urged to come forward. WA police have helped further dismantle a national crime syndicate responsible for drug and money laundering, seizing cocaine and nearly a million dollars in Perth's eastern suburbs. Live to Amber Wilkinson with the details. Amber, two teens have been charged over their involvement. Tracy, Nine News understands the two 19-year-olds had been acting as runners, collecting and distributing cash for the alleged head of the syndicate. Now, police say the pair arrived at a park in Belmont just before 7 on Tuesday night, allegedly leaving three shopping bags. Driving away, a 31-year-old man then collected those bags inside $620,000 and five kilograms of cocaine. The next day, police raiding two homes, arresting those two 19 19-year-olds after finding more cash and cocaine hidden in their bedrooms. Now those two 19-year-olds and that 31-year-old man are now facing serious money laundering charges. As for the alleged head of that syndicate who goes by Fat Boy, he was arrested last month, a short time after arriving in Perth from New South Wales. Tracy. All right, Amber, thanks for the update. You're watching Nine's Late News right across Australia. Still to come, Boeing joins the space race, taking off with two astronauts on board. The incredible Aussie-made bionic eye restoring a sense of sight. And find out Lorna's secret to a long and healthy life as she becomes the country's oldest person. Boeing Starliner is tonight soaring to the stars with two NASA astronauts on board. The historic launch following years of budget blowouts and delays. Three, two, one, ignition. At long last, left arm. Boeing gets its page in the history books. Carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. A decade in the making, Starliner with crew on board leaves planet Earth. Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams enjoyed their final steps on Earth for now. There were prayers and flowers, one last look and a wave, then a message before they were bound for the International Space Station. Now let's put some fire in this rocket and let's push it to the heavens. Starliner has been plagued by costly delays. Two previous attempts were aborted. Today, a cause for celebration and relief. Uh, I see the hard work of the team and just felt, um, you know, a sense of accomplishment. There was praise from Elon Musk. Starliner is to rival SpaceX's Crew Dragon in the commercial space race. What we're doing is expanding our reach to the stars. Tomorrow, Boeing's capsule will dock with the International Space Station. The crew will test Starliner's ability to act as a shelter. Sonny and Butch also carry a pump to fix a plumbing problem on board the ISS. They're expected to return home in nine days. Humanity is reaching for the stars. In the United States, Jonathan Kersley, Nine News. 
New technology developed in Melbourne is helping totally blind patients regain a sense of sight. The bionic eye helping them to avoid obstacles and find items around the home. Emily Rice with this exclusive report. When Colleen's bionic eye was first switched on, the 74-year-old, who is totally blind, got a bright surprise. And it was like, oh, so it was quite exciting to actually see something. The great-grandmother is among four blind Australians to receive a bionic eye in 2018, which has given them enough functional vision to do ordinary tasks like the laundry continuing to produce really good outcomes for these patients, so tick, tick, tick. The Centre for Eye Research Australia and Bionics Institute Technology comprises an electrode array implanted behind the eye and glasses featuring a camera. That camera converts images into electrical pulses. These activate retinal cells and create flashes of light called phosphenes to help patients detect edges, shapes and movement. So navigating around an obstacle course, identifying a door, uh, uh, locating objects on a table. By using the device I can tell that, you know, there's trees or buildings or things like that. Colleen still requires a cane and a guide dog, but the bionic eye means she can better navigate unfamiliar spaces inside and out. To allow these people to have greater independence. The next step in the Bionic Eye project is to embark on a larger clinical trial that aims to recruit more people with blindness worldwide. The fact that it's so safe and is continuing to actually give really good results is so important. It certainly enhances the experience of getting out there in your community. Emily Rice, Nine News. Very few Australians achieve the milestone of reaching 110 years of age, but Lorna Henstridge is one of the lucky ones. The South Australian is the country's oldest woman, revealing to Nine News her secret to a long and happy life. Cakes, balloons and even a special birthday hat. It's a super celebration for a super centenarian. Happy birthday to you. I'm very lucky to have this celebration and it's almost overwhelming. Lorna Henstridge, a beloved matriarch, marking her 110th birthday, surrounded by her pride and joy. Her three children, seven grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. A special lady who has a wicked sense of humour, a strong personality but a gentle soul. Born in Adelaide in 1914, Lorna has lived through two world wars, two pandemics and has been gifted cards from both King Charles and the late Queen. And up until the age of 105, Lorna lived in her own home. And as for the secret to her longevity, Lorna kept it simple. I think perhaps I've always been very active, did play sport quite a lot. With the wisdom of over a century behind her, she shared what is still important even at 110. I guess the main thing is to be respectful with other people and try and understand them always and learn a lot from everybody. April Creighton, Nine News. A day after a bluey coin collection was launched by the Royal Mint, there's a warning. Black market traders are taking advantage, selling sets online for up to $400. That's more than six times the original price. Prince William has shared a touching moment with a D-Day veteran who asked him about Catherine's health. The Princess of Wales is undergoing treatment for cancer. After the break, a boost in business confidence, Scott Phillips reveals what it all means next. We're checking in now with our late news regular money man, Scott Phillips, Chief Investment Officer at Motley Fool. Good evening, Scott. There's a push tonight for employees to get five weeks of paid annual leave a year instead of four. Talk us through that. Tracy, good evening. Don't get your hopes up too much, people. But uh, yet yeah, the unions are pushing for this. The SDA, the Shop Distributive and Allies Workers Union, effectively retail workers, have already managed to negotiate this with some really big retailers, including IKEA, Big W and others. Apple, by the way, included in that group. And now they're pushing through the ACTU for this to be offered to all workers right across the economy. I can hear the cheering from here. Don't know necessarily to be policy anytime soon. But that is certainly on the cards. Something to look forward to, perhaps. Uh, South Australia has <laughs> announced a plan to scrap stamp duty for first home buyers. Could other state governments follow suit? 
This is huge, mate. Look, possibly, yeah. And there are different rules already in different states, some with caps on how much you can pay to save stamp duty, others with the rules apply differently. But yeah, this is very much potentially an option. Now, South Australia doing it to try, of course, to let first home buyers get into the market without what is a massive hurdle. Stamp duty can cost tens of thousands of dollars. They're also adding a first home buyers grant to that. So about 50 grand saving in South Australia. It is going to push up prices. That's the bad news. If you add demand, as we know from inflation recently, to any market without adding to supply, mm. you're going to push up prices. But it does give those first home buyers a go. And I'm not sure this is the last we've heard of it nationally. OK. We've also been given an, um, some insight into business confidence in the current climate. Yeah, NAB's new business chief, Rachel Slade, has been out and about and has told uh, the market that basically, yeah, they're seeing really positive news on business confidence. Now, this is really important, Tracy, because we know retail sales are tough. We know GDP is flat. But if people keep their jobs, if businesses keep hiring, we will get through this one. If businesses stop hiring, if they see worse times ahead, things get really difficult real fast. Mm -hmm. Now, Rachel Slade talked about the fact that costs are increasing. That does remain an issue for businesses, but they are pretty confident, according to her. We've just got to cross our fingers and hope she's right. Hope so. It appears to be the end of the road for Bonza, with administrators conceding any hopes of finding a buyer are fading. Yeah, those hopes were already very, very slim, really, honestly. Uh, the owner of the planes, Bonza leases the planes, the owner of the planes had already flown some of them back to Canada. That's never a good sign. Mm. But the administrator pretty much today saying, look, we're done. All remaining staff, unfortunately, have been sacked. Uh, this is probably, almost certainly, the end of the road for Bonza. They gave it a really good go. Australia really struggles to have three large airlines. Two big ones, some small ones, seems to be the way it goes. A third airline's really never been successful in Australia. Finally, Scott, what are the US futures pointing to? Not much at the moment. The uh, US futures are down less than one point, and that's a tiny fraction of a percent. Let's call that flat. We'll have to wait and see what their market does tonight to know what to expect here tomorrow morning. All right, Scott, thanks so much. Thanks, Tracy. And I'll be back with your national weather forecast right after this break. Switch on a Dakin Alira X split system with advanced streamer technology to remove more than 99% of harmful indoor air pollutants and surround yourself with cleaner air this summer. Dakin, perfecting the air. Let's take a look at your national weather forecast now. Heavy rain will gradually ease across New South Wales and eastern Victoria. A high will bring the odd shower in Queensland and South Australia, while rain in WA will mostly clear as a front moves south. So conditions in your city for tomorrow, Brisbane sunny and 20 degrees. Rain easing in Sydney 19, Melbourne partly cloudy 17. 17 also for Adelaide cloudy there. Perth a shower or two 20, sunshine for Darwin 29. Looking ahead to Saturday, Brisbane mostly sunny sunny 21, a shower or two for Sydney 20, possible showers developing in Melbourne 15 degrees, cloudy for Adelaide, a top of 17, a shower or two in Perth 21 and sunshine for Darwin, a top of 29 degrees. And that's Nine's Late News for this Thursday. Our next bulletin is at 5am followed by the Today Show. I'm Tracy Vo. thanks for joining us. Good night.